I am not going to be long. I don't have much in me. I'm over as the uh, bishop, Brother Flores, somebody just come finish the notes or lead the service, and, and we'll go from there, and somebody make sure Kale goes down in Jesus' name. That's all that, that's all that matters. Amen. Psalm chapter 2, Psalms chapter 2, reading from verse 7, and says this, I will declare the decree, the Lord hath said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, everybody say, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Now, South Dakota didn't exist when this was written in title, but it existed in soil. And I believe that we can bring this verse into our context today and boldly stand on the word of God and believe that if we'll ask him, God is going to give us the uttermost parts of South Dakota for our possession. And thou shalt break them with a rod of iron and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's Vessel. Now, our desire is not to destroy everything physical in South Dakota. Our desire is to break the chains of darkness that have bound so many and to see people translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. One more time, I want you to look at your neighbor. I want you to tell him, ask of me. Can we pray together in this place? Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy your kindness, your love. I pray, God, that you would bring into this house faith right now. I, I pray that it would settle upon this congregation. Let the gift of faith be in operation. I, I pray, Lord, that the gift of prophecy would be in operation in this house today, God. I, I pray that a holy boldness uh, would rest upon every man, woman, and child under the sound of my voice. Uh, Lord, I come against a spirit of fear and intimidation, uh, and instead I release a boldness uh, and an assuredness uh, because of who we are in you. Uh, your eye is upon the sparrow. Uh, your eye is upon Jesus church in Watertown, Lord. Uh, I pray uh, let there be a Holy Ghost uh, explosion in this place in the next few moments. Uh, would you lift your hands? Would you lift your voices to the Lord in this house? Aging Caleb, resting in his newly conquered lands. He's an elderly man now, probably at least 80 to 85 years old, and I can picture him in his rocking chair on the porch of his new mountaintop mansion. Hebron, long the stronghold of the Anakims, was now his. He had asked Joshua for this mountain. He did not ask himself an easy piece of land. He picked somewhere that was inhabited by giants and went after it. His daydream reverie was interrupted when suddenly he notices down the long winding driveway comes a lone donkey and rider. Aging eyes squint into the twilight. Was that Aksa, his daughter, today was her wedding day. Shouldn't she be with Othniel, her new husband? He had, after all, fulfilled Caleb's request and answered Caleb's call for a man to conquer Kirjath Sefer. I give you Judges 1 and 14. It came to pass when she came to him, that is to Othniel, that she moved of him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted down from off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, in verse 15, Give me a blessing. For thou hast given me a south land, give me also springs of water. And so Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. Daddy had already given his daughter and her new husband land, uh, but now she comes back asking for a blessing. 
There's a boldness inherent in the request to come uh, on your wedding night instead of going and celebrating with your new husband uh, to return to the house of your father because you recognize this is probably the only chance and the only moment that she has uh, and she falls down in front of her dad. Uh, it seems a strange request, perhaps if you're a parent, uh, but a daughter coming to her father to ask for more is nothing unusual. She'd asked Othniel to go, but the Bible records that it's her that finds herself on a donkey uh, on the way to daddy's house. She's asked a bold request. He's already given land, but it's a south land. It's a dry, barren place. The fields that they've been given are fields that will be difficult to farm uh, in the wilderness. Uh, and so Othniel and Aksa realize uh, we've only got one hope for our land. Uh, and so uh, on the basis of relationship, uh, on the basis of who Caleb was to her, uh, she gets on her donkey and rides to the feet of her father. Uh, and Caleb responds to the bold, uh, perhaps even presumptuous request. Uh, the challenge the church. Uh, I've come today to encourage somebody hearing me. It is okay for you to ask. Aksa asked her father on the basis of her relationship with him. Uh, and we come today uh, into this house, uh, and we, the born only saving name, uh, we do not come with our head hanging down uh, and our arms at our side, uh, shuffling our feet, uh, but we approach unto the throne uh, of heaven uh, because of the basis uh, of my relationship with Jesus. Uh, I might have messed up this week, uh, but I'm still his kid. I might have fallen and failed this week, but he's still my daddy, and I can come to my father and ask. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, it says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are are the sons of God. Uh, and you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption uh, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, and that spirit bears witness with our spirit uh, that we are the children of God. Uh, and watch this. If we're children, then we're heirs uh, and joint heirs with Christ. Uh, if so be that we suffer with him, we may be glorified uh, together. If that ever stops blowing our minds, then we need a wake-up call. I've come to encourage somebody today. Uh, we are not beggars in the kingdom of God. Uh, we are heirs uh, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Uh, you're not the son of God, uh, but you are a son of God. Uh, and because of your basis of relationship uh, with your heavenly father, uh, hear the voice of God declaring to you today, uh, ask uh, of uh, me uh, and I'll give it to you. Ask uh, of uh, me uh, and I'll hand it to you, uh, my child. I return to Luke chapter 12 and verse 32, a verse uh, that's just uh, been a drumbeat in my mind uh, over the last 6 to 12 months. Uh, Luke 12 and 32 says, Fear not, little flock. Uh, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Uh, I want you to note that it says the kingdom, not a kingdom. See, sometimes we get that a little bit twisted up uh, and we start asking our Heavenly Father for a bigger house uh, for my little family to live in. Uh, or we start asking for a nicer car. Uh, or we start asking now, He will answer those things because God uh, is a philanthropist that is concerned about His children. Uh, but God's promise to us today uh, is He will give us the kingdom. Uh, and so if all we will do is ask, uh, our Father has promised uh, and so I come today to challenge somebody today, uh, to challenge somebody new and afresh. Uh, let's ask our Father. Uh, let's just ask him for the kingdom. Uh, let's ask him for a blessing. Uh, let's ask him for an outpouring. Uh, let's ask him to do what only he can do. See, we're a lot more like the daughter of Caleb than we might have realized We've been given a south land. Yes, it's the better Dakota, but it is 
South Dakota. It's a spiritual wilderness. It has been hard going for generations. The soil is unforgiving. It's a tough place to scratch out a crop. Now we're thankful for South Dakota and we love South Dakota. I pray you love this land, uh, and if you don't, I pray you're asking God to give you a love uh, for this land. Uh, I'm not waiting for an opportunity to escape. Uh, This is exactly where I want to be. South Dakota has got it going on. Uh, There's a promise from God that's going to be poured out in this land. But just like... Aksa and Othniel would come before Caleb. Uh, we need to come before our Heavenly Father today. Uh, you see, if we've got a south land, uh, then we're in need of something to make that south land uh, profitable. Uh, and Caleb answers his daughter. Uh, she's asking for a blessing. Uh, he could have given her a new piece of land. Uh, he could have given her a different inheritance. Uh, he could have said, here, take my mountain. I'll go somewhere else. Uh, but he answered uh, by giving her springs uh, of water uh, I've come to declare today, uh, we need a spring of living water in South Dakota like never before. Uh, There's nothing uh, that can heal the land uh, but a spring of water. Uh, There's nothing that can heal this place uh, but the river of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, We need the Holy Ghost uh, to be poured out in this last day uh, in South Dakota like never before. Uh, We need uh, more than we need bigger lights, uh, more than we need a new parking lot. uh, More than we need a roof that doesn't leak. uh, More than we need a guitar player uh, on the worship team. uh, We need a dynamic uh, move of the Spirit of God uh, at every moment, uh, at every up. On Sundays, uh, we need a spring. Uh, On Wednesdays, we need a spring. Uh, At a funeral on a Saturday, uh, there better be a spring uh, of living water. Uh, In a weekday service in your own home, uh, you got to tap into a spring uh, of water. Why? Uh, Because we're in a south land. Uh, It's dry, uh, but you can get a hold of rivers that will begin to flow into your life uh, and into your home. uh, And God... God will begin to do with work. Old request for a blessing. Uh, God, you've given us a hard land. Uh, we love the land. Uh, we will we'll die on this land. Uh, but God, give us a blessing. He gave them the spring. But they still had to till the ground. They still had to dig the irrigation ditch. They still had to plant the crops. They still had to endure the heat of the day. They still had to face every hardship of life that would come their way. But now, now they did it with an access to water. See, and God's poured out to us uh, his free gift of the Holy Ghost. And it is the greatest blessing uh, that you could ever receive in your life. Uh, It's better than a billion dollar Powerball. Uh, It's better than being born with a great last name. Uh, To have Jesus Christ living inside of us. Uh, That's access to life-giving water. Uh, But there's still going to come days uh, where you're going to have to dig the ditch. Uh, And there's still days coming where you're going to have to break up some fallow ground. Uh, You're going to have to dig it up. Uh, You're going to have to put the seed uh, in the ground. Uh, It'd be foolish for us to sit here and to shout and dance and spit and rejoice uh, because we have access to Jesus uh, and not realize uh, that there's a world outside uh, that he's waiting for us to take this water to. Uh, There's a world outside uh, that he's waiting for you uh, with the access to the spring uh, to begin to bring it over to so and so over here. Uh, Take it to your workplace and your home. In Luke chapter 11 and verse 5, we read from the New Living Translation today where Jesus says, teaching them more about this prayer or the concept of prayer, he begins to tell them a story and says, suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. And you say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have Nothing for him to eat. And he calls out of his bedroom, hey, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, 
if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. So I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. Everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. I'm so thankful for a God that does not get tired uh, of me pounding on the door of heaven. Uh, sometimes we got to get that reminder down inside of us. Uh, we like to attack the gates of hell, uh, but every once in a while, we might need to organize an assault uh, on the throne of heaven uh, and say, hey, God, uh, it's your boy. Uh, I'm coming to you today, Lord, with a need. Uh, I'm coming to you today, Lord, uh, with a request. And fathers... If your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Anybody ever given your kid a scorpion when they ask for eggs? All right, good, just making sure. Just making sure. See, it's, he, he says, of course not. It's ridiculous. You would, you would never do that, even as an earthly father. And so he says in verse 13, So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of Him? I'm thankful for the initial baptism of the Holy Ghost, but I believe that there is an outpouring that God wants to be active in our life at all times. It doesn't matter what circumstance or what situation I'm in. I can ask my Heavenly Father, Lord, I sure could use a refreshing in the Holy Ghost right now. I sure could use a little encouragement in the Holy Ghost right now. And my Heavenly Father, He's not going to send discouragement my way. He's not waiting with a lightning bolt in heaven for me to mess up and to fail just so He can smite me down and laugh. No, my Father's waiting, ready to pour out blessings, ready to pour out His goodness. He's waiting for someone just to ask. You see, when relationship doesn't work, shameless persistence will. He wouldn't get out of bed for his best friend knocking on his door. But his friend realized, look, it's midnight. If I just keep knocking on the door, he's going to get up eventually. And maybe that's not in your, your concept of God. Maybe that's not how we like to picture it working. We like to think I could just, I could say the prayer one time uh, and then poof, it's just going to appear in front of us. Uh, but God himself walking in the flesh uh, gave us encouragement. Look, uh, I might not answer right away, uh, but don't you stop asking. Uh, I might not answer right away, uh, but don't you stop seeking. Uh, I might not answer right away, uh, but don't you stop knocking. Uh, because if you you'll keep knocking, uh, if you'll keep pounding uh, on the door, uh, it will open. So you've prayed before. Pray again. You've gone to the altar before. Go again. You're battling the same thing you were battling with last week. Battle Again, uh, going before your heavenly father uh, on the basis of your adoption as his son, uh, you can walk into a throne room and uh, you bring out that request. Uh, you utter it out of your lips. Uh, you knock on the door of heaven and say, hey. You prayed for the Holy Ghost before? Pray again. Uh, your heavenly father will give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in fact, if you want to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, I believe today uh, God wants to pour out uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you want to walk out of this house uh, being filled with the presence of Jesus Christ, today is your day. But James says in James chapter 4, in verse 2, you want what you don't have. So instead of asking God, we scheme and we kill to get it. Or even worse, we're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. 
it is pointless for you to look across the aisle of this church and despise your brother or sister because of the blessings of God upon their life. That's a waste of your time. It's a waste of your effort. Because all that you have to do is take your eye off of your brother. Don't get jealous that brother so-and-so's dancing before the Lord. Don't get jealous because God's blessed Sister Susie with a financial blessing. Don't, don't get jealous and bitter and upset about that. Take your eye off your brother and put your eye back on the throne and say, God, you're a good God. You're a holy God. I need a blessing, Lord. I need something from my heavenly. Father, but you don't have what you want because you won't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get what you want because your motives are all wrong. You only want what will give you pleasure. See, I remind you today, it's our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, not my kingdom. Not my bank account, not my finances, though he will bless, uh, but it's a test to see if I'll bless the kingdom. But God uh, has promised to give us the kingdom. Now today, I, I encourage you, I am not preaching name it and claim it, where you're just going to be able to just, just speak something out, and it's going to pop into existence. See, we're asking with the right motive. Motive is important. Heart is important. What's on the inside is important. Psalm 37 and 4 says, Commit thy way also to the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. I think that verse can be interpreted two different ways. Number one, he'll give you the desires of your heart. But then as you grow closer to Jesus Christ, as you commit your way to him, he'll change the desires of your heart and begin to give you new desires. See, the closer I get to Jesus Christ, the less selfish my prayer request becomes. The closer I get to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, uh, the more humble my prayer request becomes. Uh, the closer I get to the throne of God, uh, the less it's about me and my needs, uh, and the more it's about Him and His kingdom, uh, and I can begin to ask my Father for the kingdom. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says this, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. You see, if we'll make it a purpose in our life to seek first the kingdom of God. All these things will be added unto us. Uh, if you'll change the focus of your prayer instead of praying about the financial need, uh, pray, God, what can I do for you and your kingdom today? Uh, and God already knows what you have need of. Uh, just mention it to him once uh, and spend the rest of the time praising uh, God who's our provider uh, and watch what a heavenly father will begin to do for his children. The danger of asking with the wrong motive is that we begin to get discouraged by the constant stream of no's. My kids come to me. Any parent in this house knows what I'm talking about. They want to eat candy for every meal. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Your kids are like, man, I, I want to eat a Reese's peanut butter cup, three of them actually, for supper. Can I just have three Reese's peanut butter cups for supper, please? Now, Scripture does not hamstring God because of what he's already said into some corner where he has to give us three Reese's peanut butter cups for supper. See, the motive of my children is just, it's selfish. They just want to fulfill the desire of their belly. They've got a God named Belly. They just want to fulfill what, what that, that hunger inside of them. And so God, in all of his wisdom, knowing that we're just going to consume these requests upon our own lust, God says, no. And we should thank God that he denies our selfish requests. Because while I may not be happy about it in the moment, I'm thankful in the end. 
And while my children aren't happy that I told them no about three Reese's peanut butter cups for supper, in the end, uh, they're going to understand better by and by when their teeth aren't rotten out of their mouth and they're visiting Dr. Miller every three months uh, to get a cavity filled, uh, when they're not ballooning up to 300 pounds uh, and they've learned how to have a balanced diet. Uh, you see, if we'll approach with the right motive, uh, if my kid ever comes to me and says, Mama or Dad, uh, can I have some broccoli for supper? Uh, it might might not taste good, uh, but I know that it is good for me. Uh, every which bit of broccoli I had in the fridge uh, and say, here, uh, have it. It's yours. And so if we'll ever get a motive right, uh, and if we'll ever get our eyes fixed on the kingdom of God, uh, and we'll get our hearts locked in on him, uh, and then we'll go ask of our Father, uh, our Father will give us the kingdom. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 10 as I hurry to a close today, the Lord speaks unto Ahaz, saying, Ask the assign of the Lord. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz says, I'm not going to ask. Neither will I tempt the Lord. And I know in this place today, there's that attitude that threatens it threatens to overwhelm some in this house today. God declaring, ask of me what you will. But Ahaz says, I, I, I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to tempt God by asking for a sign. And the prophet says, hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? See, Ahaz not asking uh, was not a demonstration of faith uh, and believing the voice of God. Uh, Ahaz refusing to ask today uh, demonstrated his lack of faith. Uh, it demonstrated his, his lack of belief in the word of God. Uh, and so God uh, declares perhaps one of the greatest prophecies of the Old Testament uh, and says, look, you won't ask me for a sign, I'll still give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. What a missed moment. Ahaz could have had his name attached uh, to the prophecy of the Messiah. He could have asked for anything in the heavens above uh, or in the earth beneath. Uh, you see, I refuse to get to the other side uh, and realize that I missed out on the totality of God's promise for me because I was too afraid to ask. Uh, I refuse to make it to a pearly gate someday. Uh, I refuse to live another day uh, or another week here at Jesus Church. Church, uh, and not ask God uh, for the heavens to be opened, uh, for springs of water to usher out, uh, for the ground of South Dakota to be saturated uh, with the spirit and the presence of God. Uh, one more time, uh, I refuse uh, to go another day uh, holding in my requests uh, and dealing with upset stomach, uh, dealing with frustrations. Uh, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to charge the throne of heaven. Uh, I'm going to knock on the gates uh, and I'm going to say, Dad, uh, it's your boy again. I want a blessing in the land. Why don't we stand together and lift our hands to the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. 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 I want to prod a seasoned saint today. And maybe you're thinking in your mind right now, well, I, I've got everything. What do I even ask for? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians we could covet earnestly the best gifts. Maybe it's been a little while since you were used in the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe it's been a little while since you lifted up your voice and prophesied. I know it's been a little while since we've heard the voice of prophecy flowing freely. Maybe it's been a little while since a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge began to flow through your mind. Uh, why don't you covet earnestly today? Uh, if you haven't been used in a gift of the Spirit in some time, uh, there's your request right there. Father, uh, you said uh, I could come to you. You said I could ask. Uh, and so I'm going to ask of you. 
Matthew 18 and 19, last scripture and I'm done. Jesus says that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So I've come today, I've come today with a number of requests for Jesus. I need someone to agree with me for radical growth in the children's ministry. Anybody agree with me? I need somebody to agree with me today for someone from the P7 Club to get filled with the Holy Ghost before school ends. Anybody willing to agree? Any young people willing to agree? I need someone to agree with me today that God's going to provide for a miracle roof and a miracle parking lot. Uh, and by the time that we wrap up that campaign, it's going to be time. Let me, let me just burst your bubble. It'll be time for another one. Why? Uh, because it's going to be filled. Uh, there's still room in his house. He's going to fill it. Uh, will anybody agree with me for a miracle parking lot and a miracle roof? I need somebody today uh, that will agree with me and proclaim uh, that the day will come. Uh, and I'm not talking 20 years in the future. Uh, I don't even believe it's 10 years in the future. Uh, but there will be a church school uh, where Holy Ghost filled, uh, Jesus named teachers uh, are going to be able to instruct not only our kids, uh, but kids from the city. Does anybody agree with that today? I need somebody to agree with me uh, for an apostolic uh, one God church uh, in every county and every corner of uh, this state. Uh, can I get any? I need somebody to agree with me today uh, that God desires to fill uh, somebody for the, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, for the very first time today. Is there anybody that agrees with me uh, that if you rush to this altar right now, uh, our Heavenly Father uh, wants to perform a physical healing in somebody's body? Uh, is there anybody that agrees? Uh, and is there anybody that needs a healing? Uh, if you need a touch in your body today, uh, I want you to come. Uh, I want you to come to the front uh, because there's going to be agreement. Uh, if you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost today and you want Jesus uh, to fill your heart, uh, I want you to come to the front. Uh, I want you to get down here as fast as possible. Uh, you don't have to move in sheepishness. Uh, is there anybody uh, that's facing a difficult situation uh, in your family or in your home? Uh, I want you to get down to the altar. Why? Uh, because we're going to ask our Heavenly Father for some things.